what's up you guys aftershare reacts here and today i'm going to be reacting to some more stargate this is uh sg1 uh season one episode 21 titled politics uh we were left on a cliffhanger where daniel was like they're coming they're coming the ghouls are coming i know that's not how you pronounce it i was just trying to imitate him anyways um, so let's get into it. Beware As I'm recording this, That's what the, message said. the episodes the will be starting on from. It Patreon, like, or so two weeks from now. Tells. Not no, next week, the week after. it wasn't a vision or a dream or hallucination. It was real. Now, I know this is hard for you guys to believe, but I swear to you, the entire time you thought I had disappeared on P3R233, I was experiencing an alternate reality. And you were there, and you were there, and there's no place like home. As a matter of fact, you were there. Daniel, it's not that we don't believe you. And you so were you married. Don't... No, it's just that we don't believe you. Jack, this is very important. Daniel, when you were in this alternate reality, were there differences? Yes. Tilk was leading the attack on Earth. I wasn't even part of the program. You and Jack were engaged to be married. That one. Excuse me? What? Okay, uh... Even if you did actually experience this alternate reality, doesn't the very fact that there are differences mean that we won't face the same fate? Yes, but the defining event, the death of Ra, took place in both worlds. An attack of retribution. Yes, and the same thing is going to happen here unless we stop it. Wait a minute, let me, let me get something straighter. Engaged? <laughs> it is theoretically possible. It's against regulations. I'm talking physics, sir. The, the whole concept of alternate realities, entire alternate universes, was predicted by Einstein a long time I ago. I thought you might all be here. Major Samuels. That's uh, Lieutenant Colonel Samuels, now Captain. I beg your pardon, sir. Congratulations. Thank you. You'll always be sparky to me. I thought you'd been transferred to the Pentagon, sir. I was. Stargate mission analysis. I'm here today, of course, for the hearing. Hearing? Senator Kinsey, the Stargate program, uh, I thought you were going to testify. They will. SG-1 just returned from a mission last night. I haven't had the chance to inform them. Well, perhaps I shouldn't say too much more. Oh, cut the crap, Samuels. What's going on? Senator Kinsey has taken a great deal of interest in the program. Thus far, he hasn't liked what he's seen. Sorry to hear that. As you should be, Colonel. It could mean the end of the Stargate. The hearing is at 1,400 hours. I look forward to seeing you all there. Is this because they were like, we need things, and then you just never brought back things? Don't think I haven't forgot about that episode where they're like, we need something. Like a weapon or something, and then you just and didn't end. I think it was a Knox episode, actually. General, politics isn't my strong suit, but doesn't President outrank Senator? Senator Kinsey is chairman of the Appropriations Committee. He's demanded to know what's behind the line item the Pentagon refers to as Area 52. And that would be the Stargate? An unofficial project. That just happens to cost $7.4 billion a year to operate. The President and the Joint Chiefs thought if they granted the Senator the appropriate clearances, let him in on the existence of the SGC, He'd recognize its importance to national security and authorize the expenditure. I take it he didn't. The yeah, idea backfired. After reading your mission reports and being fully briefed by Colonel Samuels, the senator decided the SGC will receive no further funding from the Treasury. That effectively shuts us down, sir. Very effectively. It costs nearly a billion dollars just to turn the lights on around here. How about a bake sale? <laughs> Yard sale? Garage? We could sell this lemonade. Is what I look like when I'm not laughing, Colonel. Car wash? <laughs> I'm sorry, sir. Hey, you made him laugh. It's just, I, I don't get it. How does one man get that much power? The Constitution of these United States. The issue of our worth could be debated openly in the Senate, but not without making the Stargate known to the general public. The President doesn't believe the time for that has come. I agree with him. So this is the infamous SG-1. Infamous? Yes, sir. Colonel Jack O'Neill. Colonel? I've heard a lot about you. Don't believe a word of it, Senator. I'm 
actually a nice guy. And this must be the drain through which the money flows. I know you have a very busy schedule, Senator. Yes, of course. I don't know how they could ever possibly shut down the Please something that leads them to other planets. I've read several reports of your excursion, and I have tried to maintain an open mind. I must admit that I find the very idea of this facility, of this command, offensive. It is far too dangerous to be this secretive. I have Offensive. found several examples where you have averted tragedy on a global scale by the skin of your teeth, and virtually none where you have brought back anything of worth. Okay, by the skin of the teeth, they have avoided stuff, so like, what's your problem? The second, I, I understand your, like, I agree with that, the second statement. Offensive? Though, what the hell? Like, what? It's not like someone's like, it's not like the Stargate is telling you you're old and ugly, like... <laughs> what? You're exploring other galaxies! Other worlds! However, since I have... This guy is a weirdo. Wrong before, the President of the United States has asked me to hear you out. So here I am. Well... Careful what you say, you might get offended. As long as you've got an open mind. Considering he thinks Colonel, the Stargate is offensive. Samuels, would you tell this man the truth? Colonel Samuels was entirely nonpartisan. Okay, now that's impossible. He's been against this program from day one. If anything, I voiced my awe and amazement at what the Stargate is a technological marvel. It is so much more than that, Senator. The Stargate represents a giant step in our understanding of the universe. We have learned more about astrophysics in these few months than in the last 50 years. It also gives us insights into human cultures that are thousands of years old. Dr. Jackson, I'm sure as a scholar of ancient mythology, you are familiar with the story of Pandora. From Greek mythology, of course. The first woman ever created by Zeus, who according to legend, gave her a box and warned her never to open it. But she did, out of curiosity. Despite the warning of her god, who was also her father, she did. And from it sprung all the plagues, pestilence, and evil that exist now in this world. And keeping in mind that we are talking about a myth, she closed it in time to keep hope inside. Then should we not close your gate for the same reason, to keep hope inside? Senator, if, if I may jump in here. I'm not as slick as you guys talking in metaphors here. I'm a military man. I prefer facts. And the fact is, the gate, i.e., the box is already open. Now what's done is done. We made ourselves an enemy by killing Ra. But the threat the ghouls now represent. Threat? Yes, sir. As in threatening? <laughs> the word threat, Colonel O'Neill, has been used far too often by this country's military as a justification for expenditures that we can no longer afford. Do you know how much this program costs? Seven ish. Seven billion four hundred and seven million dollars, give or take, per year. With all due respect, Senator, the accounting department is up on level three, I believe. But if you want to talk about maintaining the first line of defense against what I believe is the greatest enemy humanity has ever faced, hyperbole. See for yourself. General, I suggest we dial up old P4A771, I believe it was. See how long the good senator lasts in that world. I have spent a career listening to doomsayers in uniform. Let us build our billion dollar machine and we will save America from the barbarians at the gate. Let me remind you that the Cold War is over. And let me tell you something. This time there really are barbarians. They're called ghouls. And they no, really they're are at the ghouls. gate. That one! Then I suggest we close it. Senator, we have reason to Okay, that doesn't mean they can't launch an attack come here. And force in ships. Yeah. Then I think they'll regret taking on the United States military. Oh, for God's sake. Oh, you're right. We'll, we'll just upload a computer virus into the mothership. If they come in ships, Senator, we won't be any match for them. At their level of technology, they can wipe us out from orbit. I'm not convinced of that. They speak the truth. Now, I'm not entirely convinced of that either. General, what the hell are we doing here? This man has made up his mind already. Sit down, Colonel. When I've made up my mind, you will know it. Well, he does I'll not. I'll ask you once more. Sit down. I gave the president my word that I would give you a fair hearing, and I intend to do that. Yeah, this he is a good thing. you and your team up as a shining example of the 
the fine work the SGC is doing. On the 10th of February of this year, you, along with a team led by Major Charles Kowalski, went through the Stargate on a reconnaissance mission to rescue both Dr. Jackson's wife and her brother and to determine the Gould threat. Excuse me. You Senator, pronounced it wrong, Stephen. There Stifler. should be an apostrophe after the A before the U. It's pronounced Goa'uld. I assume <laughs> shortly after arriving, you were captured in <laughs> prison. Hang on a second. Hang on a second. You can't say that. You can't say that when you pronounce it incorrectly. You're just being a smart ass. Scara was chosen. I tried to stop them from taking him away, but was struck by an alien staff weapon. In that moment, Apophis gave the order. Do the rest. Oh, so we're having flashbacks. Okay. Whoa, that guy's eyebrows. It's like a Neanderthal. I can save these people. Help me. Looks different. Okay. Like, I don't know. Many have said that. But you are the first I believe could do it. I still feel weird about this moment, too. Do we need to see this whole scene again? I don't know, his face looks a little skinnier or something. So even with your team unarmed, at the it's end of his mercy, like 20 episodes. in the palm of their hand, as it were, one of their own was able to set you free. What a random transition, like, blue. Interesting that we're having like a clip show episode in season one. That's the thing from the intro. It seems to me that Major Kowalski made light work of what you referred to in your report as a death glider. They were taken by surprise. I wouldn't expect it to be as easy next time. Why not? Well, for one thing, they weren't used to fighting humans with our level of technology. Now they know what we have. I don't think you understand how much more powerful their weapons are. Yet you managed to get away with minimal casualties. Hardly the greatest threat humanity has ever faced. <laughs> What's happening? It's just SG2 returning on schedule, Senator. There's nothing to worry about. Oh, I disagree, General. I think it is something to worry about. The hell do you mean? Mr. Kinsey seems to be under the impression that the Gould are not a military threat. You seem to have defeated them handily at every turn. Did you read all the reports, sir? They actually killed us once. This is the Nox episode, right? They died and the Nox brought them back. Think. Technology can generate energy shields around individuals. They can do the same thing with whole armies and ships. And have you ever seen one of these ships? Yes, sir. Is this from the movie? So I don't remember seeing this in the show. I could be wrong though. I don't remember. Sorry. <laughs> I watched like the first three episodes over the course of three months, and then the rest have been like week by week, so. I don't miss this. <laughs> On your return from the Chulak mission, Major Kowalski became infested with a Guauld parasite, correct? That's correct. We stopped him. Yes, you did. On that occasion, with the loss of a fine officer, you did. But consider the myriad plagues you could bring back through the Stargate. Reason enough to shut it down forever. I quote now from the official report of General Hammond, dated March of this year, concerning a dangerous disease brought back by SG-1 from another world. Sorry, Colonel O'Neill, but your private room just became semi-private. And they're all turning into the Neanderthals. We've used the Briggs, we've used the temp quarters, some of the storage rooms. <laughs> 
Colonel O'Neill? I'm afraid not, Colonel. It's very real. What is it? It's a parasitic virus. All we can tell is that it seems to mess with body chemicals, all of them. Testosterone levels skyrocket, thus the aggressive behavior. I feel it's like these scenes are too long. We've seen history. all this stuff. We saved an entire race of people. I'd call that a success, sir. But if you hadn't been able to find the cure so readily, if it had reached the general population, but if it the didn't. effects weren't reversible. These are all if thoughts, but it didn't happen. You very nearly died on yet another occasion when infected by a nanocyte, sir. Right, when he got really old. I'm convinced they just want to make it, they just want to put him in as much different makeup as possible. <laughs> I really don't like how long these like scenes Maybe are, considering the fact that we've seen them already. As I understand it, you almost lost containment, Captain Carter. Yes, they tried to mutate in the lab, but after the incident, the general ordered all samples of the nanocyte destroyed. And what about next time? Well, there won't be a next time. The nanocytes, the transmitter devices, everything that tampered with the population of that world has been destroyed. In fact, SG-2 just made contact with Kynthia's planet just a few weeks ago. They are living long, productive lives because of us. Now, I am very proud of what we did there. I might even retire there. <laughs> you have no fear of it, do you, Colonel? It's like a game to you. No, sir. Anything as powerful as the Stargate deserves respect. We know how dangerous it is to do what we do. We also know how important it is. Colonel O'Neill, you are like reckless children and you're playing with fire. If you shut down this program now when it's needed most... <laughs> for what? To gather technology, weapons. Not at this price or this level of competence. My people are the best out there, Senator. I'm sorry, General, but your best is not good enough. I do not approve of nor support this endeavor. And I have heard nothing here today that would change my mind. Because you went in with a fucking closed I mind. I to shut the Stargate down. Wow, I'm shocked. You really seemed like you had an open mind the whole time. Senator, please listen to me. I think he's made up his mind, Dr. Jackson. You want your one reason? I'll give it to you. What if I told you I knew that they were coming? In ships. What if I said that a ship larger than the Great Pyramids was going to land right on top of this mountain in a matter of weeks, maybe days? Then I would be curious to know why you've waited until this moment before saying so. Because I didn't think anyone would believe me. And if I didn't live through it myself, I'm not sure I would, but it is a fact. And if you shut this program down, you'll have robbed us of our one chance to stop them before they get here. Where did you learn this information? On our last mission. We came across a civilization with a level of technology similar to our own. They had been wiped out. They left behind a warning. Beware the destroyers. Now, along with that warning came a set of numbers. Coordinates that indicate where the final Gould attack will be launched from. And did all of you witness this warning? No, sir, they didn't. Just me. We think Daniel may have experienced an interdimensional transfer to an alternate reality. I beg your pardon. The moment I touched an alien artifact on 233, when I was separated from the rest of the team, I was actually transported to an alternate reality where Earth was already under Gould attack. I got this when I was there. I've heard enough of this. Senator, the Gould were bombarding our cities from space. We were defenseless against their weapons. Dr. Jackson, I do not suffer fools gladly. Nor do I, Senator, and I am telling you, when we killed Rod two years ago, we set into motion a chain of events that will eventually lead to an all-out attack on Earth by the ghoul. If this is so, why have they waited? It would take time for Apophis to assemble the necessary forces. Right. Your society is futile. It would take time to build an army. Look, all I know is the location that they are going to launch the final attack from. If you don't believe me, just let us dial in the coordinates and let us go there and find out. How many ships, Dr. Jackson? Has anyone detected their approach? Yeah, I can't be sure of the exact details. I mean, there were, there were differences between that reality and, and this one. Oh, of course there were. I am not crazy. Nor am I, Dr. Jackson. Neither am I unused to 11th hour police, though never have I heard one so desperate as this. Senator, they are coming. Then I say, let them come. Where do you get this bureaucratic... Bull. You're talking suicide. Colonel O'Neill, you underestimate this great nation. It is you who underestimates the enemy. We have challenged Apophis. He will not rest until the people of this world worship him as their god. There is only one god, sir. And to I you. do not believe for one moment that he will allow what you're trying to tell me to come to pass. We are, after all, one nation under God. And 
You think God is gonna save us? The Goa'uld will believe they are gods, and your beliefs will not dissuade them. If the Goa'uld do come, then we will be able to tell them we have buried our gate in the ground forever and will never step through it again. If they challenge us, we shall prevail. You're a fool. And if You're an idiot. Come, which I think is infinitely more likely, then at least Pandora's box will have finally been closed once and for all. General Hammond. I would like to request permission to return to the Stargate before it's permanently sealed. I think I'm going with him. <laughs> I can't allow that, Colonel. I'm sorry, but you know that. President has made it perfectly clear if we were unable to convince the Senator, we would cease operations effective immediately. That's it, Colonel. With all due respect, sir, that's... Sir, with all due respect, the good Senator is an ass. He is an elected official of the government. Doesn't mean he's good. And whether we agree or disagree, he's made his decision. Our commander-in-chief has given us our orders accordingly. Dismissed. Alrighty, well that was Stargate SG-1 Season 1 Episode 21, titled Politics. Um, first of all, the senator, I think that's what he was, is a fucking idiot. Second of all, um, I gotta be honest with you, this episode wasn't my favourite. Uh, basically just due to the fact that, well, for one, it was just talking about politics and stuff like that. Like, I'm not a fan of politics. You guys know this, probably. Well, you should by now. Um, but also the other half of the episode was just like a clip show and for stuff I've already seen. And like, you know, clip shows are fine. Um, usually clip shows happen in like the fifth or sixth season of a show, so it's like... Oh, yeah, those things that happened many years ago, like, many seasons ago. I, like, I remember those. Like, it it's a lot more meaningful, I feel. To have that in the first season is a little strange. And the fact that they were, like, really long scenes of, like, it was almost like you are recapping those episodes, but, like, like, you could essentially skip those episodes and watch this one and be like, oh, so that's what happened. You know? I'm not a fan of that. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm intrigued to see how we get around this situation, um, because we've shut down the Stargate. What's the plan? Um, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. Uh -oh.